Okay, I'm just gonna jump right into this cause I'm bored. I'm a huge Skylanders collector. Damn, well I'm too deep in it to stop now. I have to say, while I am basically a FNAF tuber, my knowledge of Skylanders far eclipses my knowledge of FNAF. And I know basically everything about FNAF, so that says a lot. I know everything about the characters, the variants, the chase variants, the games, and while I would love to flex my collection on you, there is a particular part of this franchise I want to talk about today, the portals. Like every Toys to Life game, not you, in order to use your characters on your console you need a platform of sorts, like the Infinity Platform or the Dimensions Portal or the Portal of Power. And while most games just needed one portal and that's it, Skylanders was not most games. The Portal of Power is essentially a NFC reader and a fancy chassis. You know how you use something like Apple Pay or use an amiibo on a Switch? This is basically that, but it is a lot stronger, allowing for faster read and write speeds and a larger field of detection. This portal is integral to most of these games, so it was very important to get this part of the process right. The portal should just work with every character, and it should work seamlessly so it doesn't break immersion. Um, the amount of portals Activision released in the six years this series was running for outweighs the amount of games they put out, and the technical differences and compatibility of them is very fascinating. Well, fascinating in the eyes of a tech geek like me. To most others, it's almost like trying to buy a new car. Let's start off with the very first game, Spyro's Adventure, the bane of a Spyro fan's existence. For a first game, you would think that you would want to start out simple. No BS, just plug in your portal and go. Well too bad, they released three portals for some reason. Let's start off with the most common portal, the Wii and PlayStation portal. This was one of the only wireless portals they released in the series for console releases. And this one does so much so right. The battery life is pretty good on three AA batteries, and I have basically never had a communication issue with my game, even at far distances. This was the perfect introductory portal, and while you may have been susceptible to minor character corruptions if you happen to run out of juice while saving a toy. This was great. It's honestly surprising that they did so few wireless portals after the fact. Speaking of wireless, f that. So this is the Xbox portal of power, specifically for Xbox series consoles. Okay, so what's the deal with this? The way the Xbox manages USB peripherals is different than how the Wii and PlayStation did. I don't know if it's a platform security issue or what, but all USB devices needed to be specifically tailored for Xbox, besides the flash drives I believe. So they probably whipped this together last minute just to get the damn game working on Xbox for launch day. It's basically the same thing as the Wii portal, but wired so it's objectively worse. Finally we have the 3DS portal. These were only sold in the 3DS starter pack and were much smaller than the console counterparts, meant to hold only one figure at a time. This version communicates with an infrared sensor, so it can communicate with the 3DS directly. It kind of makes sense that the 3DS needed its own specific version, like where would I put this? But it kind of blows that there isn't one version that works on every single platform. Now I might be mistaken, but the first generation of 3DS portals had this micro USB B port on them, meant to be used in the online game. And this may have also let users use the portal on the Wii and PlayStation. I can't be sure since I don't own one of these versions, but you will see why I think this later on. Next we move on to Giants. We have four portals now. Technically speaking, you didn't need to go get a new portal this time. The old ones worked just fine, and even portal owner packs were sold in stores, but Activision needed to sell new portals for new users. So what do we have this time? Well now all console versions are wired, Wii, PlayStation, all of them. They're all basically the Xbox portal now, except they still have the same limitations. Wii and PlayStation portals are interchangeable, and Xbox is Xbox. Heck if anything, the Xbox One is just a reskin of the first portal. The only other changes to this portal is that now it has a grey base, and all of the little symbols are filled in. Same thing with the 
3DS portal, basically the same device but with a new paint job, and all of these portals work on the old games too. However, this wave brought us what I believe to be the best portal out there. It's compatible with the most games out of all of them, and it's the Skylanders Battlegrounds Bluetooth portal. So this is basically a modified Giants portal with some awesome additions. For starters, it can be used wirelessly on mobile devices via Bluetooth, which is awesome. There were three games that could work with it. Battlegrounds, which the game was bundled with, Cloud Patrol, a free on-rail shooter game, and Lost Islands, my personal favorite, a top-down simulator type game. But this portal could also be used as a console portal because it had a handy USB-B port on the back too. So that means it works with the Wii and PlayStation games too. This portal is great, and its compatibility stretches far beyond this too. So let's get into the next year where things got messy. So Skylander Swap Force kind of shook things up a bit. The new gimmick where you can swap the top and bottom parts of your figure required a much stronger portal to be utilized properly. So every game this generation came with a new wired portal. We have three portals again, the Wii and PlayStation ones, the Xbox ones, and the new 3DS one. The 3DS one while being super tiny is also capable of reading the Swap Force figures for the handheld games, but ditched the USB port on the back this time around, so it can now only be used for the 3DS games. That's not a huge deal though, all of these portals still worked on the games that preceded them too, so your respective consoles, if you own the older games, you could basically still use one portal. There is a little wrinkle in this though, since you need a new portal for Swap Force Skylanders, the Bluetooth portal that precedes it should be obsolete right? Well, this thing was still supported. So this portal can somehow read Swap Force figures for mobile games only. Basically, as long as you had the bottom half of the figure, you could still unlock them in-game and swap them from inside the app itself. It's weird, but trust me, it gets weirder. So Trap Team rolled out again with a new gimmick, traps. Basically, with these new toys, you could pull enemies out of the game and use them as tools to help you fight other enemies, which was really cool. However, this is where portal compatibility kind of gets insane. So again, since there was a new gimmick, you needed a new portal for some games. Apparently, Trap Team on 3DS just reused the portal from Sparrow's Adventure. So yeah, you couldn't use the traps in this game. What the hell? For the console versions, you needed a new Traptanium portal in order to work, with the same Xbox rule at play here. Basically, for all of the Skylanders games, if you have a Traptanium portal, you're set. However, Skylanders Trap Team also came out on mobile tablets for the first time. These were wireless portals, which could read traps and swap for Skylanders, which only released for iPads. These are super cool, they are nice and compact and even house a controller on the bottom of them. Unfortunately, this portal only works on Trap Team for iOS. None of the older mobile games support it. For those games, you still need the Bluetooth portal of power, which could read all of the Skylanders from Trap Team, but not the traps. Which makes me ask, why doesn't the Traptamium portal work on all mobile games? Why do I need to have a Bluetooth portal on standby when I get bored of this game? So yeah, it's starting to become a cluttered mess. Run. Okay, so Supercharger's kind of lost its mind when it came to portal compatibility and releases. Even though this is probably the most compatible game in the whole bunch, this game supports all portals. You can even use the Bluetooth portal of power as well. I told you this portal's compatibility range was insane. We still got new portals for this generation though, but only two of them. For the 3DS and iPad versions, they reused portals from the previous generations, with the only real change being that the tablet portal could be used on all mobile devices now. Not for the mobile games though, for superchargers specifically. The new portals we got were the Rift portals, and these are okay. They ditched the light up aspect of the portal for this track looking plate. And while it's kind of lame, there's a lot of room and the portal is super thin. Funny enough, this portal has a trap slot too, but it doesn't work in Trap Team for some reason. So like this portal works in every other game, but Trap Team. See why I said the Traptanium portal was your safest bet? So we kind of have a lot on our plates already. Let's wrap stuff up with the final game where the developers kind of just gave up. So Imaginators came out. That's it. I can trash on this game for hours, but we're talking about the portals. This game ditched the 3DS ports, so that should mean we have less portals to deal with, right? 
we got four. So Imaginators came with a reskin swap force portal for the console versions, both an Xbox and Wii slash PlayStation version in the states. In other areas, people got repackaged superchargers portals since superchargers didn't sell super well. Except these portals didn't have their trap slots accessible since the game didn't use them. Weirdly though, if you forced your portal open, you could actually lift a part to reveal the trap slot again, which kind of shows that this was a rushed cheap fix to a really superfluous change. These four portals basically work the same as their original counterparts, but that raises the question, what about the Switch? For a new portable console, it got its own Skylanders and had both USB ports and an IR scanner. So how were the portals for this game? Non-existent. Imaginators on the Switch just decided to take the Amiibo route and use the NFC reader in the Switch to scan figures into a library. I'm kind of divided on this. For one, this is a great way to preserve Skylanders. The RFID chip gets worn out after a while, and having something like this can help figure's longevity. However, it kind of loses the magic of the portal concept. So yeah, that was the crazy world of Skylanders portals. A lot of other games usually had like one or two portals for the entire existence, and they kind of stayed within the bounds of their initial concept. I think they may have been affected by the same Xbox issue as well, but I don't really know. I just thought it was surprising how complex the portal compatibility is for these games. It was so weird that this Bluetooth portal, while not working in every game, was basically supported throughout Skylander's entire six year existence. But if you were an Xbox user, you were basically screwed. It was an overlooked complexity when Toys to Life was popular. I'm just gonna sit back in the comfort knowing that I have like seven different portals on standby and instead waste my time wishing that the Springtrap Skylander could finally release someday.